Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today, we're going to start building up the head for our 2016 Yamaha YXZ1000R. Now, on this particular video, we're going to finish cleaning it up. We're going to clean out the valve guides, go ahead and replace these exhaust studs, and then get everything put together. So if you're ready, let me go open up the toolbox and we'll dive into this project. Now, if you've been keeping up with this build, you know that we already did the bottom end and we ended up reducing the compression ratio because in a later video, we're gonna put a turbo on this particular unit. But today, we're gonna be focused in on the head. Now, we just received it back from the machine shop and it's been given a clean bill of health. Now, while it was there, I went ahead and had them open up the intake ports, just smooth them out a little bit so it'll be a little bit easier for that turbo to cram in that charged air fuel mixture. So here's what I've decided to go with. You know, you know that I'm a big OEM guy, but on this particular build, I decided to go with parts from Kibble White. Now Kibble White is world renowned for their build quality, the endurance, I mean, the, how it's going to fit in here and the longevity, and it's going to put up with the extra stress that we're going to be inducing into this head because we, this is going to be a forced induction engine. So we went with their Black Diamond series, and they're actually forged stainless steel valves. Now we paired that with springs, keepers, and seals, all from Kibble White. Now all these are designed to work together. They can withstand the higher temperature and the pressure that we're gonna be putting this head under. And it was just a little bit better fit for this particular engine build. Now the one OEM component we are gonna to add to this equation is I am gonna replace the exhaust valve studs. These were just looking really rough and that's just not the look I wanna have as we're putting all these new components together. I can tell you from personal experience, you do not want to try to remove these studs without heating them up first. Otherwise, chances are you're probably going to either strip it or break it. So go ahead and break out the torch, spend a little time heating them up one by one, and they will come out a lot easier that way. What it's basically doing is just breaking down any corrosion in between these studs and the aluminum head is that took almost no effort. Look at that. Big difference. a little bit more corroded than the others. I'm still going to put a little bit more heat on that one. I'm worried that the stud's going to break. Yep. Wow. Let's see if that last one's going to come. Yeah. Okay, kids, what's the moral of this story? Heat it up all the way. I'd say go at least a minute and a half, two minutes. As my theory is on that one is I didn't heat it up quite enough. It was still corroded in there, but I did get it to turn and then it galled it. So guess what else we're going to learn today? How to use time certs. Because that's what we're going to use to straighten this out and get us out of this mess. Once I completely get this stud removed. You know, guys, this is all part of being a mechanic. Sometimes things don't go like the service manual says they're going to go. Every 30 minute job is just one broken bolt away from being a two day ordeal. Well, this is what you want it to look like right before we get to put in the time cert itself countersunk, nice clean threads going all the way in at the right angle. So now let's, uh, let's get it installed. And if you're curious about the difference in between time certs and helicals, we have a video for that. So go check it out. This, this is actually stronger than just the stud going into aluminum. And that's been proven 
So I have zero concerns about this. But since we seem to be in machinist mode, we're gonna go back and use a thread chaser and clean out the rest of these because obviously there was some corrosion in there to begin with. Now in a pinch, you can use a tap to do what I'm doing, but it does more damage than just a chaser does. This has many more advantages. So I highly recommend picking up one of these. If you try to do what I'm doing with a, uh, a tap, you'd have to use a tool to run it in and run it out. Why? Because the very tip is kind of a drill bit. So it's going to take out a little bit more material than it should. Whereas a chaser is going to do just as it is describing. It just chases and cleans them out. It does not try to cut new threads. Now I'm feeling warm and fuzzy about all of this. For this, I'm just using the standard brake and contact cleaner from Yamalube. Now, let's get these new studs put in. And I realize that even with high temp, thread locker is probably going to burn it up considering where it is. But the main reason I do use it is if you ever had to remove these, the thread locker, it keeps it from corroding because it's going to seal it up should you ever need to remove these, which you probably won't, but hey, they would come back out substantially easier than what we just dealt with. All right, what we're gonna do next is use a ball hone, 4.5 millimeter. It's not a ream, it's just a hone. Put it in a little bit of oil, and all we're gonna use it for is just to run it through a couple of times, and we're really not trying to to straighten out any imperfections because I don't think there are any. I just want to make sure it's clean inside of each one of these guides. Now for this I'm using a little bit more high performance cleaner if you will. It's another product from Yamalube PPC Precision Parts Cleaner. I'll be curious to see if it blows out anything on the towel. Maybe a little bit but that could have been just the oil but it makes me feel better knowing that it's completely clean now. Let's go ahead and get in our seats and our seals. And it does get really tight in here, so I would advise using a small magnet. Makes life a lot easier. And do put the seats in first before the seals. All right, next are the seals. And basically, they just press on. Just line it up pick tool and then push it down flat. You'll feel it kind of pop in place. Because it, you can't see it from here, but at the top of the valve guide, it has an indention right at the top edge. And that's what this little spring is going to grab into. They don't give you a lot of room to work in here. I've got one that doesn't want to go on very smoothly, so we're going to put a little bit of oil around it to help it along. Now the Yamaha manual says you know, to use oil on all of them. If I can get them to go on without doing that, I usually would prefer that. That's just personal preference. Guys, there is one thing that I kind of skipped over that I forgot to mention. Before you put in the seats and, of course, the seals, you would need to lap your valves in. These have already been lapped in, and you can see that on the edge. I didn't request it, but they had done this at the machine shop to help me along. Now, personally, I would have rather done it myself, but if you need to know how to go through this process, go to several of our engine builds where I'll, I'll go through the process of how to lap these valves in. I think probably the best example is to go to the Raptor 700, go to that playlist and look at the, uh, the head assembly and I can walk you through how to achieve that same, same mark. Now we have a link to it in this card if you need to go watch that video. Now let's go ahead and add some oil inside each one of the guides. I'm going to do this 
from the bottom here as well as going up to the top and doing the same thing on the seal side. I do not want that to be dry on startup. All right. Now we should just be able to pop in the valves and they'll stay in place when we bring over the, the vise to get them installed, the springs installed. Oh yeah, that feels good. Now I do rotate them a little bit as I'm pushing them through the seal. Now if you do as they did, the machine shop, and lap all yours at once, make sure you number them as I've done so you can get them in the right place. A thing of beauty. Now let's bring over that vise and get these springs and keepers installed. Some people put this in a vise and use the compressor around it. I prefer to go this direction. So to each their own, but this is a really great unit and it comes with a couple of different optional heads that you can get to get into these tight spaces of which this is one and this one fits in there very easily as you will see. So inner and outer spring. of different ways you can do this. You can use a magnet, but my preferred way is just a pick tool with a little bit of grease on the tip just to hold it in place. The magnet can get a little tricky sometimes. So what you're putting together here is pretty much the same for any valve train configuration. You've got the, the top of the valve stem where it's got a groove cut and your keepers are going to go into that groove and then the retainer is going to come up because the keepers are at an angle and that's going to lock it in place. And that's all easy, easy to say but hard to do in such a small space. But just be patient and work them in there one by one. One down, 11 to go. Same thing. I am one with the force, and the force is with me. <laughs> well, everybody's in place, but before we can call this done, let's go ahead and make sure they're seated. And what we're gonna do is just pop it, just to make sure those keepers are in place. We're gonna do each one. To do this, you can either use a socket, or in my case, I'm just using the opposite end of a 3 8 drive. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. In the next one, we will address getting the head mounted, get everything torqued down, get the cams installed, as well as setting the timing. Well, listen, if you need these or any other parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. Have any questions about this particular video? Leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla. We will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.